Hi, my name is Nat Russell. I'm the chef owner of the Tennessee Truffle. We're here in beautiful, historic downtown Sanford. Today for you, we have a airline chicken breast. It's from Bell & Evans in Pennsylvania, and it's gonna be coming with a wonderful spoon bread, super Southern, and a lot of people seem to really enjoy. And our sauce today has all the elements of historic downtown Sanford. Today, the burr fondue is gonna be made out of corn, from Big Daddy's in Oviedo. We are going to use Rosie Lee's tea to infuse the corn stock as well as Loggerhead Distillery. We're gonna use their sweet tea vodka. And both of these are about a block away from the restaurant, which is pretty amazing. First off, we're gonna make our spoon bread. Uh, a lot of people know cornbread in the South, but unless you're from the South, a lot of people aren't sure what spoon bread is spoon bread, which is kind of like a custard. And the name came about because you can't use a fork to cut it. Uh, because it's a custard, that fork slides right through it. So we're gonna start with our ingredients for the spoon bread. I'm going to sift our cornmeal, our baking soda, our baking powder, sugar, and salt. What's great about this dish is we're using a lot of amazing produce from right around the area and we're gonna add it to the spoon bread. So we have this corn that I talked about before from Big Daddy's Farm. We also have broccolini and spearmint we're using because of the flavors that are in the, the tea from Rosie Lee's. All right, once we have the cornmeal, all the dry ingredients together, we are going to whisk our eggs. These are Lake Meadow Farm eggs, and I will make a well in the middle of our dry ingredients and add our egg. Once we've incorporated our egg, we want to whisk this together. Next, we'll take our buttermilk and incorporate that. You want to preheat your oven to 400 degrees. And with this, kind of like, uh, kind of like cornbread, you want to add your butter to your casserole or souffle dish. We're gonna take our butter here, add it now, and put it in the oven. The difference with cornbread and spoon bread is spoon bread can break. Adding cornbread, you wanna have your pan as hot as possible when you add your mixture. So for us, we'll leave it in there for the butter to melt, but that's all we want. So we sweated down some leeks, and I like the sweet onion where uh, the onion is nice and mild. So we'll add the onion to it, and then I, I pulsed up some of that sweet corn we have, and I'll add that to it. I just want this to be nice, light, but still sweet, using all these ingredients from around here. And then we have the corn as well. Mix that together. This thing's ready to go in the oven. It's like magic. The butter is ready. It's melted and we need our whisk to whisk the butter into the cornmeal. And if you don't whisk it in, this can break. All right, we will take this, pour it straight into our container. We have an oven that has been preheated to 400 degrees and we will cook this for 25 to 30 minutes. I use Rosie Lee's twice in this. Once will be for the brine and the second time is for the sauce. So first, a brine is super simple. All you need is water and salt. One tablespoon of iodized salt to one gallon of water, or if you're doing kosher salt, it's one and a half tablespoons of salt to one gallon of water. I utilize the zest of the orange as well as a little bit of mint and our airline chicken. 
uh, has been sitting out for an hour. It was in the brine for 16 hours. Once we bring our salt and water to a boil, I pull off the heat and I add rosy leaves tea in. I want to infuse and make this a salty tea. And this is what I brine my chicken in. By infusing other flavors that are mentioned in Rosie's tea, we have the lemon, we have the orange, and we have the spearmint. So what I did here is I took spearmint and I took orange and I also added all that to our brine. So with it sitting for that 16 hours, our chicken really should take on a lot of those flavors. All right, after you pull your chicken from the fridge, you wanna be sure that your chicken is as dry as possible. So I'm gonna take it out of the brine and really be sure to dry it well. Another thing is you don't want this to go from a cold fridge into a hot pan. Uh, it's better to let the chicken sit out for 30 or 45 minutes. Next, we'll start up our sauce. We have shallots here that we need to slice. Like before, we have our corn, and then the orange that is in the tea. We also have orange supremes right here. We have our spearmint off the side. I also have broccolini and our corn stock. Whoever gets this dish, I would love feedback. So please uh, call or text or leave a message and let me know what you think. All right, let's get our sauce going. The first step to our sauce is our stock. So our stock here, I wish that I had the time to make it with you, but every single week we make a vegetable stock or a corn stock, uh, never unless we need it for a chicken or a beef dish or a lamb dish. We usually don't make those stocks, but we, we use these stocks as almost like a mother sauce in a sense. We use our sauce uh, or our, our stocks for basically everything. So we're gonna take this stock right here that we made and we'll turn the oven on. So a traditional burr fondue is water and butter. And a lot of restaurants use this kind of like I'm using this stock right here. They can use it for almost everything. Uh, and the thing that's so great about a burr fondue, I think is you don't get that greasiness from a normal butter sauce. So here we are, we have our stock here, and we have Rosie's, Rosie Lee's tea right here. So we're gonna infuse this tea into our corn stock. So I want this corn stock to hit about 170 degrees. We don't want it at a full boil, which is 212. Uh, and right when it hits that, I'm gonna turn my heat off and add our tea mix for about 10 to 15 minutes. We're definitely there heat-wise and I'm gonna add the tea. While the corn tea is steeping, we'll start our chicken. So I like to always cook with a neutral oil. You can do a soy oil, a canola oil, or even a grapeseed oil. Uh, a grapeseed oil costs a little more, but the smoke point is high, and you're not getting flavors from something like olives. So it's very neutral. We wait for this pan to uh, shimmer or almost look like water and by that point we know that it's it's the heat is high enough for us to add our chicken throw a glove on and remember that we brine this chicken so i'm going to add the very smallest amount of salt here and the higher up you are they say make it rain uh, the salt seems to distribute better than going from one one area so I wanna take our chicken here, make sure it's completely dry. And what we look for with our pan is for that shimmer, but we also, we look for a very, very small amount of smoke to start going up. And also people throw things right down. You can test with water, but that's gonna bring the temp back down. Anything you add to the pan is gonna bring that, that temperature back down. But I can see that small amount of smoke now. So then I wanna add my chicken to it. Press it down. 
you're going to hear popping and you're going to feel it. But we want to start getting a little bit of that caramelization now. We have to remember that there's a little bit of sugar in that brine. Uh, a lot of people don't add sugar, but we add a little bit of sugar. So we want to be sure that the chicken doesn't burn. So I'm turning my heat down a bit. And what's fun, I think, is a little restaurant trick is I'm going to leave it skin side down when I throw it in the oven. The brine helps the chicken uh, to stay moist while we're cooking. This technique also does the same. So from here, I'm going to check our chicken. It's looking good. We're going to leave this as is and toss this into the oven. We're going to cook this chicken until it reaches about 153 degrees. You want to pull your chicken at 160, but uh, the carryover cooking is going to go six to eight degrees. All right, awesome. At this point, we are going to start up our sauce. All right, a little bit more of that neutral oil. And we are going to sweat off our shallots. And because I said sweat, we don't want to caramelize these. I'm going to add a very small amount of salt to this now. This helps leach out, uh, leach out water. And by doing that, you have more of a chance that you're not going to caramelize. And this right here, the tea cornstock, looks like it's done. At the very end of the, uh, uh, of the sauce preparation, we're going to strain this into here. All right, and this is the fun part. We're going to deglaze our pan with that wonderful sweet tea vodka from Loggerhead Distillery. If you don't live here in Sanford, the back of my restaurant, I can literally look out and see the back of Loggerhead. So that's how close they are. If you do make your way to Sanford, you know, please check out all of these amazing restaurants and breweries and uh, distilleries. Everyone is uh, super amazing in this town. Here's the loggerhead sweet tea. I'm really happy they brought this to me because I'll get to finish the bottle myself. Um, add this and be careful. Alexa off. There's our 25 minute timer. So. Yeah, don't stand right over this because there is a high alcohol content and when you flambe it, you're cooking that alcohol out. And now we'll just get the wonderful flavor of the sweet tea vodka. All right, so here's our corn pudding right here. And if you see, the middle isn't completely set. A lot of times you can jiggle, but with this, you can't tell. But we're very close. I'd say five more minutes and it's done. All right. So, we have our onions caramelized, and from here, I'm going to strain some of our corn tea into the pan. Let's just do it all. Put this off to the side. And we're going to reduce this all sec, which means almost gone in French. It smells great. I get those hints of corn, and I definitely smell a lot of tea. Once this reduces, I wouldn't wait till the very end. Uh, this sauce has a lot of butter in it, and what's amazing is by adding these beautiful segments of oranges, uh, it, it cuts that, that acidity will help cut that fat. So we'll let this reduce for about two to three minutes. So as our sauce probably has 30 seconds to go, uh, I don't know how much time Alexa has left. I'm thinking a minute or so, but our spoon bread is done. So I wanted to pull that and show this to you, how beautiful that is. And once we cut into it, you'll see how silky, silky smooth this is. All right, so we are ready on this sauce. Usually a beurre fondue is completely uh, yellow for the most part because it's only water and butter. So for us, you know, 
we're gonna start mounting in our butter now, which we need a whisk for. So I'm gonna pull this out and start with our whisk. And if you're worried that it's too hot, the heat's too hot, you know, you can take a little more of your stock and add just a couple, uh, couple teaspoons to it. Now this is looking nice already. Uh, our corn is raw. I like raw corn, but I think uh, cooking the corn for about 30 seconds uh, takes a little bit of that bite away. It's still al dente, but it, uh, it, it's not as, as harsh. So we're gonna add that corn to this. And our broccolini that we have here, it's just the florets. Uh, we're gonna add that as well. We want that uh, vibrant, bright color to still be in here. So I add that last second. Uh, I blanch that just in salt water. And it's, uh, people say, you know, salt your water like the sea for blanching green vegetables. Uh, so here it is. And then right here, this is the time that we're gonna add a little bit of that orange juice, and then we'll add our segments as well. So, segments are in, and then I'm gonna stop whisking because I don't want to uh, break those beautiful segments. All right, I'm gonna put this off to the side for the time being, but that's our, our beautiful sauce. And we'll check our chicken. All right, our chicken's close. I'm gonna now baste the chicken. So I'm gonna turn that heat back on. And at this point, I'm gonna flip our chicken over and see how beautiful that chicken is. And you wouldn't have seen it even become this caramelized and brown if I didn't have sugar already in that brine. But I'm okay with that. I think it almost looks like barbecue chicken. All right, so. Here we have fresh lemon thyme from my garden at home. I'm gonna add more of this butter and be sure to still have all that fat in the pan, uh, your, your neutral oil. And if you don't have that fat in the pan, then the butter will burn. So, right here, I wanna baste my chicken out. Let me get this out of the way so you guys can see. All right, so you're incorporating that beautiful flavor of butter as well as that, uh, that gorgeous thyme that we have. Last off, I'm going to uh, pull this off and I'm gonna let it rest for about five minutes. If you cut it open now, just like meat, then all that juice is gonna run straight out of the chicken, and we don't want that. We want it to distribute back through the chicken. And we look like we are pretty much there. When this is finishing off in the pan, I'm gonna show you the last step to this uh, beautiful sauce that we have. Remember, as I said before, with Rosie Lee's tea, in this certain tea, there was orange and lemon and spearmint. Well, I chiffonaded some, some spearmint and I'm gonna add that last second. You don't want it to brown, so you wanna add that at the very, very end. All right, I think we're, we're a couple minutes out from plating this dish up. Okay, we are plating. So we have our spoon right here and hopefully, since we haven't cut into it yet, you can see what I mean by how silky smooth. And yep, so this goes down, let's do a little bit more. All right, we're gonna slice our chicken so it's been resting for about five minutes or so. And I like to use a serrated knife for this. And you'll be able to see in the middle just how perfect it is. And uh, I'm not gonna lie, this looks pretty good. All right, so our chicken's going down.
and then our sauce. So what's nice here is I like to get everything kind of around the plate and then we can really get some of that sauce in there. So right here, I'll take a spoon that's not perforated and kind of add some of that beautiful burr fondue. So guys, right here we have our pan seared brine chicken, our spoon bread, and our burr fondue. If you're interested in ordering, this weekend we will have this amazing dish. So please call us at 407-942-3977 or you can message us on Facebook. Please come check us out at the Tennessee Truffle.